Hey guys, welcome to the Center Bounds. Today we are talking about this the orange team, um, as Miss Underwood likes to call them, because there's a big, big sound coming from the west of the town, isn't there, Big J? Mate, there's a big, big sound coming from the bottom of the ladder. It's GWS. <laughs> They're not bottom. Take it easy. Oh, it's pretty close. Were they third last on the ladder? Like, there's no mate. big, big sound, mate. There's big, big sound coming from somewhere. The other team's laughing at them from the other side of the field when they play every week. I tell you what. It's from his mouth. The big, big sound. Big, yeah. big Kelly is back from injury. And he, he had was, a good, he had good a game last week. Win. Yeah. Oh, he was sensational. He should have come to week. North Melbourne all those years ago. We would have paid him over a million dollars a year. You would have looked great in North Melbourne colours. Come on, Kelly. Do like your dad did. I tell you what. Okay. It looks like he's going to be an orange man for life. Um, you yeah. say that they are last on the ladder, third last. They're currently 11th on the ladder. I know you were just I mean, joking. It just feels worse best. than it is. I don't know. Six wins, eight losses. You know what I mean? Like They're almost 50-50, 97% percentage. Mate, mm -hmm. they beat... The Cats in Geelong by seven points. I will have you know. Yeah. It was a down game for Geelong. But all credit to GWS. I mean, they're the one team in the league that has consistently lost good players year yeah. after year after year after year. And they're still competitive. I mean, if this was yeah. North Melbourne, if we lost half our good players every year and then the other half and then the other half... Mate, if these guys could actually pick some good players in the trade period and some good players in the draft to develop the team, that'd be that'd be top six right now. Yeah, hundred percent. They're a, they're yeah. a decent team that, as you say, has been absolutely gutted over the years. And they've got a new coach. They're trying to learn a new system. They're fifteenth currently on the ladder in terms of the metrics. Eleventh mm -hmm. offensively and sixteenth defensively, which is obviously not very good. They rank 12th in terms of the coaches' votes, and it certainly helps when you've got a guy like Toby Green um, on your team because he certainly will accumulate some coaches' votes. The guy is an absolute superstar. Yeah, it's um, it's a real case of if you're not first, you're last with these metrics at the moment. GWS is just kind of, yeah. For a team that's 11th, I thought the metrics would be a lot worse than what they are, but... Must have just had a lot of really close games. I mean, we know that by their percentage this year. They must have got really smashed by some, won a couple of games, maybe, you know, sub 10 points there. Yeah, they've been fairly competitive. That's something mm. that, um, you know, in most of their games, something that they can, you know, rest their hat on, obviously, <laughs> I'm sure. Something yeah, you know? that North Melbourne fans could aspire to. Look, nah, it's the, you, don't, you never want to aspire to be like, like the Giants, but... This is someone that every ruckman in the league should be aspiring towards, mm -hmm. isn't he? <laughs> Mate, Briggs has been the saviour for our super coach teams in the second half of the season. He's come out of nowhere. Was basically their third string ruckman at the start of the year. Kicked out Flynn, has kicked out Pruce. I don't see this guy leaving. Above average for disposals, for contested possessions, for clearances, for hitouts to advantage and score involvements. He really okay. feels like... He could be kind of the, the R1, R2, R3, at least top five next year coming into the start of the season. Oh, mate. This is look, this is just non super coach talk. Daniel Hoyne uh, on the radio the other day said that he works for Champion Data. He is right now in the league the number one ruckman in the competition. He is playing so incredibly well. He is flying. He has come into this side and he has completely changed the makeup, the look of this team. They look really competitive. He's given them first access for first use of the footy. When you've got guys like Tom Green, contested ball, Canelio running through there, Kelly running through there. There's some, mm. oh, Halloran is a big boy. They've got some people that can go through there and he has given them silver service. This guy is a gun. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent, Joe. He's only twenty three years old. You know what I mean? Like he's Mate, the, 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 they're on to a winner. They just have to keep him. Hopefully, they can pay him enough money to not get him lured away by someone else coming in a few years. Absolutely, hundred um, percent. This one probably won't be going anywhere. Um, won't be lured away. 
but um, mm-hmm. someone needs to lure him to the footy because he can't get his hands on it. Mate, one mark inside the 50. What is this? Like, is that per game or just his whole career, Joe? Uh, per game, know. per like, game. Mate, for, for a number one pick, I think he's – oh, I'm glad North Melbourne didn't pick him. That's all I'm saying. You GWS, happy to trade you for a couple of players and some picks to make this happen last year. Cadman, uh, less than five disposals a game. Below average goals. One mark inside 50. Can't even kick to save his life. Man, he's just saving someone's spot on the bench. I reckon this guy's cutting up the oranges at half time. Like, <laughs> oh, can I help out, please? I need to do that. You're surprised he's not the runner trying to go out on the field. You spend more time on the field. I reckon he'd actually help more in the team, Joe. I was about to say, the runner's you probably put the more useful. in making the runner. Look, mate, you might say that this is really harsh, right? Really harsh yeah. on a first-year player. But the thing is, when you're a number one draft pick, certain things are expected of you. And at yeah. least being able to bring the ball to ground is one thing that you need to be able to do. Yeah, I know you're a young key forward. You've got a lot of years to build, but still, you need to have some level of contribution and, and competitiveness. And unfortunately, he's, he is almost a liability on the field. I, I'd much rather Hogan, an injured uh, an injured Hogan on one leg at this point. I feel like he's, he would give more uh, to a contest at least. Mate, just put Bruce on the field. At least you push people around. It'd be good for two games and then he gets suspended. But those stats yeah. from the two games probably even out more to what Cadman's done for the year. Yeah. Look, the kids, I'm sure the kids got a lot of promise. It was a bit of a, it was quite the bolter in order to get up to number one. He was nowhere near number one calculations no. before the, before his draft year, right? When he suddenly just astronomically rose out of the blue. So you can only hope that he can sort of build off of that, recapture some of that form, because right now that start, that end to his draft year basically appears to be a bit of a flash in the pan almost at this rate. Yeah, it's a tough one. Um, there's a lot to live up to with the number one pick. At least GWS isn't one of the Victorian teams where the yeah. pressure's put on you straight away to perform. Right. He can kind of hide away. I'm surprised he hasn't played more VFL time, to be honest. Um, but I guess there's a big difference between that and the AFL level in terms of talent. So got to throw them in the deep end and see how they go. He can he can be hidden away from most outlets, but not from us. We're on no. to you, Aaron. Lift, son. Uh, we've given him a B overall. Uh, how the hell did they lose to West Coast? They, they could genuinely be the only team to lose to West Coast this year at the, the way it's going. It is <sighs> with, with that list, there's no you, it's hard to imagine that how they could have lost, especially with the way they've been performing, uh, especially now in recent times with Kieran Briggs coming in. They've been very competitive against some good sides. They absolutely smacked the living daylights out of Frio last year to the tune mm. of 70 points. Looks like the Orange Tsunami is back, Big J. Mate, for a team that's lost Hopper and Taranto and had some injuries to key players... They've done very, very well. Kind of, we look at their stats, we talk a lot of shit and, you know, have a go at the players and things like that. But if any team lost two of their really good players back to back, had a depleted midfield, it's understandable where they are. And they're doing very well with the crop of players they've got at the moment. 100%. So I don't know how many views this video is going to get to watch us bash this poor first year key Probably forward. More than their I don't know. Number. Tell you what. Yeah, because I don't know how many... I'm sure that there's more GWS fans than Gold Coast fans. They've been a bit more competitive than Gold Coast over the years. But let us That's know true, down true. in the comments below what you thought of our assessment of the Gold... Of Gold? Of the GWS Giants. Almost at a Kelly Underwood there. Almost called of them the, the Orange Suns. Team. The Orange Team? <laughs> the Orange Suns? No, thanks, guys, for watching. Stay tuned. We're almost finished. We've still got some more mid-season reviews to come. Yeah. Remember, guys, here at the Centre Bounce, we do the hard work so you don't have to. Bye for now.